What is up guys, this is Sito back with another video on the Redmi Fit 20 Pro and today in this video I am going to be showing you the latest project Blaze ROM. This is the version 2.6 official build, the Android 13 based ROM and this is the 19th March 2023 update. So let's talk about the features of it. Of course this ROM comes with two separate versions like Vanilla and GApps I guess and as usual I have flashed the GApps included variant. And if you don't know how to flash this ROM you can check out the flashing guide from the description. And this ROM is also decrypted by default so you don't really need to flash a DFE but yeah I did flash it and it did not give me any problems. First things first talking about the stock launcher this is how it looks like. Well I would say the stock launcher is a little weird this is a pixel extended launcher let me actually show you as you can see this launcher shows as pixel launcher extended but here weirdly in the app drawer i could not simply get the app searching working like as you can see i'm just searching for any app and it doesn't work like no app shows up but yeah there is the like global search kind of option it searches the web and stuff i disabled that but even with that it did not actually give me any app suggestions with the app searching option so yeah that's how it is i'm not talking about the suggestions only but the app search actually to the left of the home screen we get the google's discover page and stuff and they are pretty smooth no issues but this rom of course is running at 60 hertz there is no 100 hertz or 90 hertz refresh rate or something over here i'll show you more in depth about the launcher later but right now let me show you the about section this is how it looks like we have the Android version as Android 13 and if you make this clock to 1 o'clock you will get the Android 13 easter eggs, they look cool. The project Blaze version shows up as version 2.6. The device maintainer is current gen swal so huge thanks to the developers of this ROM. And we have the security patch as February 5th 2023, not quite March yet even though this is a March build. As you can see this is a March 16 build over here in terms of the kernel and the stock kernel is that 4.14 English OS kernel and the build number you can see from right here is next data shows as enforcing. In the system panel this is how it looks like we have the live translate option then the pop-up camera settings there is a camera calibration option as well. In the gestures we have the system navigation gestures and stuff. In the settings of it we do have the pill length customization but there is no pill thickness customization over here and we have the haptic feedback customization as well. Then we have this swipe to invoke hesitant and stuff if you want to use that you definitely can. Two button and three button navigation is also there one handed mode also works perfectly fine and we have the press and hold power button actions you can change it. Then we have the swipe to screenshot and let me actually show you it does work perfectly fine. We have the share edit delete and the google lens option. Now here we also have a system updater you can check for updates whenever there is a new one it will show up over here. And I think you can actually use this OT updater as this ROM is already decrypted by default. And in the settings this is cool that it shows this kind of random messages. Right now it's showing the search bar is pixels below and there it is. Now let me talk about the launcher again and in terms of the stock launcher yes there is the widgets and stuff working fine and the animation of the widgets are working totally fine. I have added this subscriber count widget as well but there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. Do not expect all those. In terms of the home screen settings this is very similar to the pixel launcher there you won't get any kind of double tap to sleep and stuff but there is the search your phone option then we have this suggestions option you can disable them if you want overview suggestions and stuff you can disable or enable it however you want to and in here it shows this really cool like weather and stuff then it shows hello there or something like that so yeah the stock launcher is good enough i would say but yeah the app drawer i did not simply like because I could not simply find any particular app by searching over here. Also the seek bar does not work like you cannot really scroll with the seek bar anyhow. So that is one more bug I would say in terms of the app drawer. I simply do not like this app drawer on this launcher. Now swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel. This is how it looks like and has this rounded and squarish kind of looking quick setting panel. Definitely looks closer to the Android 11 kind of experience right out of the box but you can actually change it I guess and you can like swipe over here let me actually show you which toggles that you can add even more so these are the toggles that you can edit and add right now let me show you which ones i have added i have the wi-fi mobile data the bluetooth toggle and stuff the flashlight dark theme auto rate night light and the screen recorder is also there there is the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time we have the battery saver do not disturb google home controls data saver then the hotspot nearby share and the do not disturb Always on display you can toggle on or off and we have screencast, airplane mode and the one handed mode. No refresh rate toggle, no deceiving or something like that, no high brightness mode, all those things are simply missing in this particular ROM I would say. Brightness slider shows up on the bottom because I have changed the position of it and we have the auto brightness button and in terms of the power menu this is how it looks like, you can tap on restart to actually get the advanced reboot option if you have enabled that. 
and you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. Now one interesting thing about this ROM is that this ROM comes with the MIUI camera right out of the box or the ANX camera and yes it is working perfectly fine. This is not the Leica camera by the way. 0.6x lens is working perfectly fine and 1x, 2x everything is working fine over here. So all the lens switching can do over here and in terms of video settings we of course are getting the 4k 60fps option. You can shoot 4K 60fps videos with the main sensor, no issues with that. Even there is the pro mode and you can actually shoot pro mode videos if you would like to. So yeah, this is great. You can also do the 4K 60fps pro mode video where you can choose the white balance, shutter speed, ISO, etc. You can customize. So yeah, pro mode video is really like awesome. And in terms of portrait mode, let me actually show you by switching to the front camera. And as you can see, it is working perfectly fine in the portrait mode and you can adjust the beautify and stuff, no issues. So yeah, this is great that we are getting the MIUI camera right out of the box. You also have even more settings like these blur depth and stuff as you can see depth effect over here. So you can customize all of these if you want. And if you swipe up, there is the 48 megapixel mode, the documents mode, vlog mode, you can download them and use them. There is also the sticker avatars and stuff. You can download every option over here, no issues with that. So yes, getting the MIUI camera right out of the box is awesome in this particular ROM, I have to say. This ROM does have safety net pass right out of the box, so you do not need to worry about banking apps on this ROM. Also, the DNO Info stays as L1 here, so Netflix or Amazon Prime Video Streaming Internet B will be working fine. This ROM does have Pixel Unlimited Backup, so yes, Unlimited Pixel Backup is there in the Google Photos, so that's great. Now, talking about the settings panel, this is how it looks like again, and first we have the display settings. Here we have the brightness level, adaptive or auto brightness, you can enable it and we have the lock screen settings in here we have the privacy then the add text on lock screen control from lock device and the show device controls and we have this always on charging ambient display option there is the pickup option i have enabled that i'll show you that later and there is the dark theme we have this scheduled dark theme and the use black or the pitch black option is there and we have the colors and the double tap to wake and stuff and that's it there is the display size and text, but there is not much customization like dimming and the high brightness mode, all those things are simply missing from this ROM. Inside Blaze House, we have the customizations. Now, customizations on of this ROM is great. Like there is the like tabs, like themes, status bar, and all of these customization. I'll show you one by one the animations you can notice over there. And we have the setting style. You can change it to old or new. The new style is not much different. You can try it if you want. I have tried it and we have the headline and body fonts. There are plethora of fonts that you can choose from. Let me go back. We have the icon packs and then we have the signal icon styles. Then we also have the Wi-Fi icon styles as well. Then we have the icon shapes. But let me tell you the lock screen clock style. You cannot really change over here. Inside status bar, we have the status bar items, headset, Bluetooth, etc. kind of icons you can enable. And we have the battery style. You can change it between these many options. There is an icon landscape right and left. And of course, I have been using it with the right. But you can also go with big dotted circle and thick circle and stuff. But I have to say the battery icon, if you're noticing on the status bar, it's really big with the icon landscape, right? In some ROMs, it's a little smaller that I have to say. And the battery percentage, you can change the position inside or next to the icon. Then we have the clock position, then the clock AMPM style. You can enable it in small or normal fonts. Auto hide option, then the separate signal icon styles. And we have the 4G icon, then the show device icon and stuff. Roaming indicator, colored icons, and the status bar, double tap to sleep mic and camera privacy indicator and then there is other options in the next slide we have the quick setting panel customization there we get the brightness slider changing option like the show always and show when expanded then we have the position you can change it to top or bottom then we have the auto brightness icon quick setting tiles shape here you can change it and by default with this one this is how it looks but right now let me actually switch the rounded and rectangle and let me show you this is how it looks over here and the round option is also there where the quick setting panel will turn into rounded every way. So this is more <laughs> looking like the Android 11 kind of experience. But yeah, with the Monad theme engine, it definitely looks different, I have to say. But you can actually change it and the quick setting transparency as well, you can change. Then we have this vibrate on toggle touch, reticker and the data usage and stuff. Then next we have the lock screen customization. Here we have the ripple effect, then the lock screen double tap to sleep, charging info, hide quick setting in secure lock screen in the media cover art and the UDFPS customization is also there. There's a screen of UDFPS that's the always on fingerprint option and we have the other icons. Plethora of icons are here if you're noticing. So yeah, a lot of icons like this Pokemon and stuff, all these things are there. Let me go back. We have these animations as well. If you enable it, there are plethora of animations that you can choose from. I've been using it with a Mac Ryan one. I'll show you the fingerprint scanner speed later on. 
Next one we have the system, then we have the in-call vibration options, long press pop button toggle torch, double tap to wake on doors and ignore window secure flags, enable advanced restart, then the unlock higher FPC in games and the Google Photos unlimited storage. Next one is the buttons. Here we have the on-screen navigation bar and stuff. In the wallpapers and styles, this is how it looks like. I have changed the wallpaper. I've been using it from the wallp app, I guess. But this is the default wallpaper that you will get. It shows this project blaze kind of logo right there on the left side of the screen. Looks beautiful, I would say. Let me go back. We have the wallpaper colors and the basic colors. You have 16 colors to choose from over here. And then we have the dark theme, themed icons, app grid. Okay, six by nine but I have been using it with a 5x5. Let me go back and in the sound and vibration settings, this is how it looks like. Media call ring etc. Volume controls are there and we have this shortcut prevent ringing and the screenshot sound and stuff per app volume control is there. But there is no me audio direct. I could not simply find it on this ROM. By the way, the volume panel looks like this. You can switch the output device from right here and the animations, if you just notice that, looks so beautiful. In the battery settings, this is how it looks like. It has this cool looking battery bar I would say the green kind of looks different and it does not even have the battery temperature seeing option just forget about the battery charging cycle current battery capacity design battery capacity all those things are simply missing from the battery settings there is the battery optimization even though but let me show you I have been using the aqua battery app to actually test the battery life here it shows me that I have been getting about nine plus hours of screen on time by the way, this is an estimated time guys. This is not what I have actually got. But with my usage, this is estimated that I will get about nine hours of screen on time. I have to say the battery life over here is great. And the screen off or the standby time you can see is about six days. And the combined use is about 54 hours. So yeah, that's a really good battery life. And I have replaced the battery. So this is a new battery. That's why I'm getting amazing battery life. And in the health section, you can see my battery health shows up as 91%. So for me, the battery life and the battery health has been great. No issues and even the fast charging is working perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever with that. In the security, in the settings of it, we have the quick unlock and there is other things. And we have the fingerprint and the face unlock. Let me just set up the face unlock quickly. And here we have this when swiping up on lock screen. But let me actually show you again the app lock is also here. You don't have to go into the more settings to actually get into the app lock. And you can like lock any particular apps that you are using. So let me show you the locking and locking things. By the way, I just double tapped on the status bar to actually lock the device because there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. So as you can see right now, the pickup option actually worked perfectly fine. So here, if I just tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it unlocks. So yeah, very fast fingerprint scanner unlocking experience, I have to say. Just notice even with the screen of FOD. So yeah, it unlocks perfectly fine. Let me try one more time and yes. And from here, as you can see, the unlocking experience is perfectly fine with the fingerprint scanner and the animations are very smooth. Even though it's running at 60 Hertz, you don't actually feel it after a couple of hours of using, I would say, because the experience overall is very smooth. Right now, let me show you the face unlock. So I have to double tap to wake and just swipe up on the lock screen and choose reorganizing face. And as you can see, it unlocks as soon as I point the device towards my face. So let me try one more time. And yeah, face unlock worked perfectly fine. Now talking about the app lock, let me actually show you. And yes, as you can see, the app lock is working perfectly fine as well. In terms of recent panel, this is how it looks like. We do have the split top mode and stuff right here. We have the screenshot, the select option right here. And if you go all the way to the left, you can clear all the apps from memory. Now, in terms of the benchmarks here are the CPU throttle test and the Geekbench score. Because I could not simply get the Android benchmark working, let me actually show you <laughs> as soon as I open the Android benchmark, even though this is the latest build of the Android benchmark apps, but still it does not simply open up. It just force closes for some reason. So I could not simply show you the Android scores, but otherwise overall performance for daily driving is good enough on this ROM, I have to say. And if you want to try this ROM, you definitely can. This is a really good stable ROM, I would say. And even in terms of Twitter scrolling and stuff, as you can see, everything is perfectly smooth. There is no lags or stutters over here, even though this is running at 60 Hertz. The overall experience of scrolling and like flying through the UI is perfectly fine, I have to say. So no issues whatsoever that I have faced over here with the daily driving performance. You can definitely try it if you want. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the latest project Blaze ROM based on Android 13 for the Redmi K20 Pro. And subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD Index signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.